So I want to talk about an idea. Not a graph political idea, not a complicated fiscal idea, a simple idea, but one that has the power to change the world nonetheless. I want to talk about a world where innovation and technological advancement happen not only by the hands of the large, rich companies, but also by the hands of the enthusiasts, the crazy ones who spend their weekends at home taking things apart, the inquisitive ones who just need to know how stuff works. But now I have a confession to make. I'm not talking about a fantasy for the future. I'm talking about a silent revolution happening today, and I'm part of it. So now that you have no idea what I'm talking about, I want to start with these. Some of you might be able to tell, but these are actually relatively expensive 3D printers. And through some very advanced technology, and essentially magic, they can create virtually any object you can think of. Even things which are practically impossible to make otherwise. Things like this. So this is a candlelight holder I printed at home. It took me a couple of hours to print. But to make something similar using traditional materials like wood or metal, you would need an amazingly skilled craftsman. And even then, there's no way you'd be able to print it within a couple, to make it within a couple of hours. But here's a little secret of mine. This is the printer I printed it on. This is the printer I have at home. I paid about 500 bucks for it and made it from a kit, as opposed to several thousand dollars like the earlier models I showed you. And through continuous upgrades, it can print very nearly as well as the Pro models. But guess what? I only designed some of the upgrades I've made for this printer. Some of the most impactful changes I've made have been designs which are tested and created by the community as a whole. This is the first time something like that has ever happened. But what am I talking about? Well, this focus on the importance of the community to create and develop these ideas is the revolution I'm talking about. For the first time, there's a community of people and small businesses supporting them who aren't really in it for the money, but because it's what they love to do. People like me. So then you might ask, well, who's part of this larger community? And the answer might surprise you. So for those of you who don't know, Maker Faire is essentially a bunch of nerds and geeks, like me, getting together and running the greatest show and tell on Earth, open to absolutely everybody. And they are the amazing community I'm talking about. But here's another little secret. If you go to Maker Faire today, it won't take you very long at all to realize that most of the people there are young people who are really driving this forward and injecting the passion and the energy which sets this movement apart. But there's no way this amazing community of young people would be able to do what it does if it weren't for another revolution which is also taking place. The advent of open source stuff. Basically, if something is open source, it means that everything, all of the design files, software, manufacturing resources, everything that was used to create that object are available, usually online, for the community to access and then tinker with, play with, learn from, modify, and basically do whatever they want with. That's huge. For the past century, the approach to creating new stuff has been one of hiding it behind patents and copyrights in the name of financial gain. But that isn't happening anymore. For the first time, people are sharing not only what they've done, but also how they did it. And consider what that allows. Now everyone has easy access to this knowledge, so all of a sudden we're seeing regular people go off and make the most amazing projects without the technology being a major hindrance. And somewhere along the way, something magical happened. Kids got involved. Regular kids like me, some of you, some as young as 11, 12, even younger, we're all of a sudden able to use this amazing amount of creativity they have to create some of those amazing things without the technology being a major obstacle. And I get that this sounds a lot like a fantasy world, but consider this. Recently, Google released part of the artificial intelligence they use as open source. Mozilla Firefox is open source. Part of the Android operating system has been released. Even Tesla cars are technically open source vehicles. There really is a change coming. 
And I think the best way to demonstrate how that change is coming is in a project like this. So the idea with this is that the light is connected to a small computer, which is connected to the internet. And what it does is it monitors what people are tweeting and does some really clever maths to figure out what kind of mood people are in. So the result is a mood light which reflects the mood of the people, the mood of the city you're in, or wherever. And I think that's really cool. But guess what? Any of you could go home this afternoon and make yourself one of these. Because the person who made this went onto a website called Instructables and uploaded a very detailed step-by-step -step guide as to how he made it. So all the hardware he used, all the software, how he put it together, everything. And guess what? He didn't even design all of it. He took parts of this from another Instructable, both of which are open source. And I think that's awesome. But as cool as it is, let's be frank, this isn't the project changing the world. Project like the RepRap movement are. So 20 years ago, a 3D printer would have looked something like this. Very large, very expensive, yeah, just generally not accessible to the general public. So the RepRap movement came along and decided to change that. It decided it wanted to create a 3D printer which could print another printer. So what does that mean? Well, by radically simplifying and changing what a 3D printer was supposed to look like and do, printers went from this to that. And that brought costs down to an almost unbelievable level. 20 years ago, a decent 3D printer would have set you back tens of thousands of dollars. I paid 500 for mine. And that like, dramatic fall in cost made 3D printing accessible to almost anyone. All of a sudden, institutes like schools, small businesses, even individuals at home, were getting these printers and using them for everything from the usual uses, like just prototyping, all the way to the almost unbelievable. This is a fully functioning 3D printed guitar. And I think it is absolutely gorgeous. And this next one is one of my absolute favorites. So this is a 3D printed prosthetic arm. And using about $50 worth of open source electronics, it has a voice activated interface for the wearer to control it. But my favorite part about this project isn't the fact that it's there, but it's the fact that the person who made this wasn't a PhD level genius. He was a high school student in America, a regular kid like you or me who just wanted to go out there and make a difference. And for me, that's what this is all about, helping those less fortunate than us. And this isn't an isolated example either. Following the tragic earthquake in Japan and the resulting Fukushima nuclear disaster, it didn't take long for people to realize that there was no real unbiased source of radioactivity readings across Japan. So a group of makers in Tokyo got together and they made about 100 of these. These are open source Geiger counters. And what they did is they made these and they distributed them all over Japan. So they had this network of readings which they knew were not tampered with and were very reliable. And it doesn't end there. So in my grandmother's house in India, for example, they use gas stoves with gas cylinders in the kitchen. And when there's a gas leak, normally people can smell the gas in the air and take action to prevent anything worse from happening. But a couple of years ago, my grandmother started losing her sense of smell, which meant that she couldn't smell that gas anymore. And, as you might know, that is an extremely dangerous situation to be in. So my solution was to create this. The total cost of all the stuff on this board is around the $2 mark. And basically what it does is it detects when there has been a gas leak, and it lets her know there's been a gas leak, so she can prevent anything worse from happening. And this kind of thing can save lives. So this change in how technology is treated, in that it isn't the sole responsibility of a company anymore, is really changing the world more drastically than anything at least my generation has seen. But it's still fresh and exciting straight off the press. So what I want you to do is to be open to all the changes coming. Because I promise that you won't see them coming. And they will probably come for the people you expected nothing of. But consider this. The author Douglas Adams once said, technology is a word that describes something that doesn't work yet. 
And that's where this revolution is, in its infancy. But I promise you that if you give it the chance, it will work. And it will most certainly work wonders. Thank you.